Hey there folks, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I'm happy to finally be making uh, one in a series of videos on those uh, white rotary machines and I'm referring to the white rotary because of the white sewing machine company uh, who held the patent for a particular rotary design and as you folks have heard me speak about when I've talked about uh, rotary sewing machines they were made uh, from early in the in sewing machine history and there were, remember there were many companies competing with different types of engineering designs because it was a relatively startup industry and uh, the white company had uh, either on its own or through an acquisition that company had uh, patented a rotary hook and stitch as Singer and some of the other companies did but the, the white company had early on focused on machines once they got into the electric era, because remember white was making lots of um, <clears throat> treadle machines you know, that used belts. But once we got electricity in the 20s, uh, the company decided to go with a beltless uh, drive system. Now this is called, you're looking at the, the motor here on the back, and this is called a friction pulley motor, or many of you call it the, the rubber motor pulley system because it uses, a, 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 basically it uses tension of, the tension of a spring and a rubber pulley. So I'll show you how it works. Now this says Dressmaster, but remember the White Company produced machines for, <clears throat> under its own name, the White Name, and then, of course, they made them under the Franklin name and the Kenmore name and the Dressmaster name and a few others that do not come to mind. <clears throat> and they used uh, the same motor design. And it's, this is the same color as this machine. So I don't know if, if they were running a material shortage. This machine would have been made in the late 40s. And a lot of factories were still trying to sort out uh, their production schedules because they had heavily been involved in making materials for World War II. And so, you know, it, it may have been a little, uh, uh, there may have been a variety in what you got when you bought something new in that period. In any case, uh, these motors are remarkably strong. And when I first got my first version of one of these machines some years ago, I looked at it and I thought, well, how is this gonna work? You know, is it going to be able to go through heavy fabrics and so forth? So <clears throat> the motor sits on the back of the machine. It is mounted to the body of the machine with a bracket, but then there's a large and, and pretty beefy spring. So you can see if I, if I push back with my finger uh, and then let it, let it come back gently, you never slam things, you'll see that the spring is pushing against the hand wheel like this. And, you know, it feels, you can feel the tension. The springs last a long time. Even springs were made better in the old days. I know that's kind of sad to say, but even those were made better. Uh, below the motor, you see a, a three-pronged uh, space where <clears throat> the electrical plug would go. And later on, when I talk about, uh, I'm going to do a, a video on how to maintenance uh, motors in terms of bearings or oil. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a different video. But today, I really wanted to focus on this because so many of you have asked me, hey, I've got one of these, I can't get it to run. And uh, the one that I have is actually not bad, but I'm gonna show you a way to increase <clears throat> its friction if it's old and dirty. It's, there's nothing complex about it, we're gonna clean that. But I wanna show you what often happens. Now here's an original friction drive pulley. This one, of course, is made of brass. Later on, they would uh, change to a different metal. Uh, the reproductions are not brass, but that's okay. And notice, uh, if you look up close, you're gonna see that there is a straight head screw. And if you look at it in profile, it's a set screw. So that when the time comes for you to put it on the drive shaft of the motor, uh, you, you, you set this up in the proper position, and then you tighten the screw and that holds the pulley there, and it's, it's actually quite effective. So the reason <clears throat> this had come off of another machine I had restored, and I'm gonna turn this in my hand, and I want you folks to see. Now there's, you know, the rubber is somewhat degraded, but it's not bad. It has a, a, a lot of good rubbery grip, and it looks like it was being used just fine. 
but then look what happens. You see this little flat spot. Hopefully you can see that in the light. There's like a there's like a flat plane where there should be it should be round. And the reason for that, just do this on the side, see if you can see that flat spot as it comes around. The reason this happens, of course, is that when these machines were originally purchased and used, the, the thought was they got used often enough that this would not happen. This happens anytime anything that has uh, any kind of pressure or weight and it sits on rubber uh, or any kind of foam, you, you know that eventually it will, it, will, um, it will cause a flattening of that surface. This can happen with cars when they're parked for long periods on tires and they don't get driven. In any case, this is one of the reasons um, this little friction drive does not work. And you can imagine either it would work really roughly or it would simply stop moving. And I can't imagine how many people have actually thought that their roll rotary machine was broken and beyond repair. And they didn't actually know that the reason was they had kind of a, a flat tire, if, if you will. So I'm going to show you today uh, how you address that. How do we take care of that? It's, this is actually one of the simplest procedures you'll ever see because it's very easy to get to. These motors, just like the Singer, some of the Singer motors, um, are actually set up in a way that they can be maintenance without a lot of fuss. So <clears throat> here, and I'll zoom in so you can see a close-up of the set screw on this particular machine I have. And you'll notice that, make sure she's going to focus in for you. You'll notice <coughs> that the set screw is right here. Now to give myself a little working space so I don't have to fight with the hand wheel, I'm going to take, this is just a little wad of napkins. I'm going to pull down on the motor and just, just I'm just going to shim it there just for a moment. That takes the pulley off of the hand wheel and just makes my job a little easier or your job if you're doing this. Now, Remember what I've said before about screws, if I haven't. It's very possible this is the original pulley, uh, although it may have been changed at one point. And last night, I went to test this. Now, you can do one of two things. You might have one of your uh, bobbin case small set screws. And again, this is not a one-size-fits-all. This is actually, am I getting this in front where you guys can see it? Here we go. Um, this screwdriver, which is designed for bobbin cases, it's pretty straight. It's not tapered. You can try that or, as I've recommended to you folks in my, in my toolbox video, this is from, if you remember, <clears throat> you remember that bright yellow box. I told you folks I use it virtually with every um, sewing machine restoration. And these are my screwdriver tips that are not tapered. And I really like using it <clears throat> because, let's move this out of the way a bit, because it does not strip screws. Now last night I went and I tested this. I put the screwdriver in and it was very tight. And these screws are very well made. But remember what happens with old sewing machine oil. It can become sort of like a glue. So I put a drop of sewing machine oil and tried that. <clears throat> And then I took a little drop, very carefully, of a uh, little WD-40 and loosened it up. And then this morning, it was ready to come out. So I'm going to use, so you guys can see this a little bit better. I'll let you see. I'm going to loosen that screw. And then you'll see the, the, the pulley wants to come right off the shaft. You don't have to take the screw all the way out. This screw is about the size of a peppercorn. And if it goes bouncing on the floor, not saying you can't find it, but it would be a lot nicer not to have to do that. <laughs> now, this shaft, unlike some on other sewing machine motors, is actually round. There's no flat area. I was looking for that to, to, where the, to a space where you would actually put the set screw. Now, you might think, well, gosh, how am I going to know where to line this up? What you want to do is make sure that the rubber surface of that of that little wheel, which is what's actually going to hit, come in contact with your hand wheel, is lined up properly. And actually here, and I just simply put it all the way and there's a stop inside. Don't know if you can see that, but there is an actual place where it stops. 
Now the new replacement that I have, uh, it actually goes all the way through. So you would want to you would want to look where this one stops and kind of get an estimate there. But I'll show you how it's not difficult. So even though my wheel here is dirty and I'm going to clean it up before we put it back on, I wanted to use this as a way to demonstrate. So let's take this wheel. Now this is one of the new replacements. Remember I mentioned to you in the parts, the new parts uh, video, I believe that's when I mentioned it. Here we go. I'm trying to get these in camera. There's a large size and a small size. And just look at your machine to determine which one fits yours. And uh, these are both, you know, they're made quite well. They both have set screws. Now this little one here is a little different. When I first ordered one of these before, I got it in and it, you know, it seemed to be made very well, but you'll notice that the screw that is used to set it is different. And you're going to need a very small Allen wrench. And I honestly don't have the, the measurement of this Allen wrench uh, offhand. It's going to be, um, huh, I'm trying to imagine what, what to tell you. It's, it's smaller around than many nails, <clears throat> but if you have a set of these small Allens, you should have this size. Uh, and this size is perfect for turning this set screw because it does not use a screwdriver. It uses a hex, an Allen wrench or a little hex key. So you can see here in profile, I'm going to loosen it. Again, try not to loosen it where it comes all the way out. You can put it back in, but it's a tiny screw and you don't need to put yourself through that. Now, I'm going to take, and I don't need to lubricate this because this is actually not, we don't want it sliding on the shaft. We want it to stay put. So you're going to take the pulley and unlike the other, the, one, the old one, <clears throat> which I took off and was solid on the, uh, on the rubber end, this new one is not. It has an opening, which is fine. There's, there's no problem with that. So you just want to look at where your positioning is going to be. So let's take a look. I'm going to take my shim out for a moment. And let's let the, the pulley wheel touch the hand wheel. Okay. And I'm just going to estimate roughly where the other was. You know, you can see where the other, you can line it up here with the middle. The middle of the rubber can be lined up with the middle of the hand wheel if you like. This is about where it was. Now, in that position, hold the wheel steady so it doesn't wiggle from, from, from side to side or laterally, and you're going to tighten it. And like anything, when you tighten something, make it snug, but don't tighten it like it's, you know, like it's going to be holding 10,000 pounds because you, you may need to loosen it. Now, as I mentioned in other videos, uh, white rotaries, these machines turn. Now, these machines, watch, these machines turn counter, I mean, they turn clockwise, but uh, opposite to the way singers do. Now notice what happens with this, just this spring, right? Just pushing there. It actually will create friction and you will get a powerful stitch. I was kind of skeptical when I first saw this. Um, one thing you do want to make note of, I'll take this one back off, is when you're doing things like this, it's very easy to get sewing machine oil or who knows what on your fingers. And you're not going to want that on this rubber surface. Okay. So what you want to do is clean that. Uh, make sure that there's no oil at all. Oil and rubber parts are not a good combination. So what I'm going to do, unlike with the sewing machine you saw me cleaning yesterday's video, I'm going to take uh, a mixture of isopropyl rubbing alcohol and water, about 50-50. Now, if you have 50% alcohol in a bottle from the drugstore, that's fine. You don't need to dilute anything. But I had the 91%, which is useful for cleaning grease, but uh, off of metal parts. But now I'm going to uh, take that 91%. I cut it about halfway with water. Here I'm going to use a um, paper towel. And I'm going to take... I might as well go ahead and take this one and I'm going to clean it and that should not hurt anything. I would not use full strength alcohol on it. There's no point in pushing 
the limits to whatever the chemistry of this rubber is. Remember, you're, anytime you put any kind of cleaning solvent or cleaning product, it's, it's using chemistry to do its work, so you want to be careful about what it interacts with. Okay, so I'm going to set that one aside. That was just a new one to show you how they apply. Here's the one I took off, and you can see the only thing that's really on there is, uh, looks like dust, lint, and I'm going to work to get that off because I, I don't actually want that on there. I'd like to have some friction on my friction pulley here. And a little bit of a groove has been worn down the middle of this. That's okay. What you don't want, of course, are those uh, really hot, uh, excuse me, hot spots, flat spots, because flat spots are gonna interfere with the, the machine's ability to rotate and it's going to create a, a heck of a problem. Now, because this uh, original uh, motor drive, friction drive pulley, because it's still good, I'm going to put it back on and I'm going to keep the old straight, uh, straight head screw. Some people have tried to take the straight head screw and put it into the, the new replacement you can try that. I am not sure if it works or not. I actually have not attempted to do so because both of these function. I just keep the old screws with the old pulleys and then uh, you can try using the old screw in, in, the, in the new replacement pulley, but you don't have to. There's no real need. I guess you could try that if, <clears throat> if you didn't have an Allen set, but you probably should have an Allen set anyway. Okay. No, don't want the new one. I want the one I have. So I'm going to take this here. I'm putting it back on the way it was. It has a natural stop spot. So I'm going to take, and I'm gonna, again, put this back on. This, again, this is one of the easiest things you'll ever do in any kind of sewing machine overhaul. Definitely wanna make sure your machine is unplugged anytime you're doing any kind of maintenance. That just makes common sense. Now, another thing you can do is you can take that uh, alcohol water, or even you could even do the higher strength alcohol. And let's put this up a little bit. And you can see where my hand is coming over here. You can take and you can clean the surface of the hand wheel because just the oil from your skin can build up on these over time, okay? And you'll notice I have a white fluffy towel underneath. I never spray liquids onto uh, to a machine, other, you know, other than the sewing machine oil. And I, so I want that hand wheel surface cleaned. Okay. Now this hand wheel is, is chromed. If you have a chrome or nickel plated hand wheel, you can do this. If you have a lacquer painted hand wheel, do not use alcohol on it because you'll strip the paint off. In that situation, you're going to want to use uh, basic water, like I've shown, and then uh, I would just use uh, you know water and a, and a paper paper towel, and that that should clean off most of the oil that you would have on the hand wheel. So you now have a uh, pulley. This, again, this is the friction drive, and you'll notice that <clears throat> this is how she runs. Now, when the when the motor is hooked up to electricity. You'll see, uh, you'll see this spinning, and it will grab hold of this hand wheel. Like I say, when I first saw this design, I was kind of skeptical. I thought, this is so shiny. How is that ever going to work? But it actually works well and is very powerful. The other great thing about this machine, and I'll cover this when I talk about uh, the maintenance video on this particular motor, you have access to two of the motor brushes. And, but you want to be careful with those for several reasons. You don't want to crack the motor brush caps and you don't want your brushes to go flying because they are spring-loaded. So anyway, I'll talk about that in a different video, folks. But this is uh, basically many of you have had this issue where you had kind of the flat tire. Uh, and it mostly, sometimes they, they, they dry rot and crumble, but most of the time it's because they've been sitting. And if you don't, if you have one of these machines and you don't use it often, you can take something, again, it doesn't have to be this, and, and you don't want to put anything really wide behind that motor. Just enough, all you really need is just enough shim, right? Just to hold the rubber pulley off of the hand wheel. 
and it should be fine till the next time you sew. If you sew often enough, you may not even need that. But anyway, that is the beginning of the series that I wanted to uh, start making some videos on these white rotary machines. In the next uh, uh, installment of this series, when that occurs, I'll talk more about, again, uh, uh, greasing bearings, checking brushes, and then we'll also take a look at uh, threading these machines, which also tends to perplex people a bit. And it's just because you haven't used them. Uh, these machines were not exotic or, or obscure. They were probably the second biggest brand in the world once upon a time. So these, they, cut, they sit um, in many places. A lot of people find them. Many of you have them in your families. But I just wanted to demystify the rubber pulley and let you know that if you have a rotary machine with a friction pulley, you have at least two, it may, there may be other size choices in these, and they're less than $4. So you can literally bring a, a machine back to life if the pulley is the main source of your, your sewing woes with your rotary. So anyway, hope that was helpful. Uh, and uh, any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And if you want, you can subscribe to the channel because my new videos appear sometimes each day, but then sometimes I may do a video per week. But if you subscribe to the channel and click on the little bell symbol, it will notify you when a new video is uploaded. Anyway, thanks a lot.